so today we've got a fascinating topic that i would like to share with you all which is the hidden truth how banks make millions um, with your money so if you've ever wondered about the inner workings of the financial world you are in for a treat today hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel i'm glad that you're here but before we dive deep um make sure you hit that subscribe button and um, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on our eye-opening um, contents that um, we share so let's get started we all trust banks with our hard-earned money but have you ever wondered how they manage to make millions off of it well today we're going to pull back the curtains and explore the strategies bank use to turn your deposits into big profits for them so the number one way is interest on loans one of the primary ways banks make money is through interest on loans whether it's the mortgage car loan or the personal loan banks charge interest on the money they lend right so this will create additional income and money coming in for them as they um, give out all this money in form of loans people pay interest back to them so another way the banks make money is through investments so all the money you put in the bank they actually invest it some of it they invest it, some of it they lend you know so it is very strategic um, investment for them they invest in financial vehicles some real estate some life insurance policies um, so all the funds that you have um, in your bank account some of it gets invested in government and um, some corporate bonds some stocks and some other securities so some of it, the banks will look for um, government bonds or even corporate bonds. There are some investments that are um, guaranteed return. So some of it, they can invest it in like certificate of deposit in other banks, right? So the banks, they are a very business minded organization. They invest in stock, right? Banks invest in stock. They hire people that trade on stock. So these are some of the ways the bank make money. They are called financial institutions for a reason. Now, let's explore the reserve requirement. The reserve requirement refers to the amount of funds that banks are required to hold in their reserve. So typically, it's a percentage of their total deposit. And this is usually controlled by the Federal um, Reserve Bank. These reserves are held in either cash in their vault or deposit with central um, bank. So the reserve requirements are set by the central bank of a country, such as the Federal Reserve in the United States or the, um, the European um, Central Bank in the Eurozone. Now, let's take an example of how reserve requirements work. Suppose a country's central bank set a reserve requirement of 10%. If a commercial bank has a total of 100 million in their account, it is required that they hold 10 million of that, which is 10% of 100 million in the reserve. Now, here is a breakdown. A customer comes in and deposits 100 million, right, in the bank. The central government has a stipulation that the bank must hold 10% as reserve requirement. Now, 10% of 100 million, which is 10 million, the bank will either have that in their vault or deposit that amount in the central bank. This ensures that the bank has sufficient funds to meet the withdrawal demand from its depositors and maintain stability. If the bank holds more than the required 10 million in reserves 
The reserve can be used for lending and other investment opportunities that might come across their way. On the other hand, if the bank holds less than the required reserve, it may face penalties from the federal government or the central bank and some restrictions might be imposed um, on them. So adjusting reserve requirements is like a tool the government use, um, the central government use to influence the money supply in, um, in an economy. So for example, the central bank increases the reserve requirements to 15%. The commercial banks would have to increase their reserve from 10 million to 15 million, right? Remember our initial example, thereby potentially reducing the amount of money available for lending and also impacting the overall supply of money in the economy. So conversely, if the reserve requirement is decreased, it could lead to an increase in um, lending and money supply. Now, let's talk about how banks create credit from deposit through a process called fractional reserve banking. This is an interesting concept because you have to understand how credit is created from the money you deposit in the banks. So the banks create credit through a process called the fractional reserve banking. This process involves banks holding only a fraction of their customers deposit in their reserve and using the rest to extend to loans and to create credit and um, here is a simplified explanation of how fractional reserve banking works so you go into a bank you deposit your money into that bank now the bank is required to have a certain percentage um, held right either in the central banks or put in their vault right so the reserve requirements let's assume that the reserve requirement is 10 percent so if the customer deposits hundred dollars into the bank the bank needs to keep ten dollars of that which is ten percent of hundred dollars in its reserve and then use the remaining 90 to extend the loan this is where the magic happens so this is how loans are created. The banks can now lend the 90% to another customer. This customer in turn may deposit that $90 into their bank account at the same bank or a different bank, the same $90 the bank gave them. Now, the process is repeated all over again. Remember, the process repeats and the cycle continues. So each time a loan is made, and the funds are deposited, a portion of that is kept as reserve and the rest is now available again for um, lending. So the cycle keeps multiplying, um, the initial deposit and the returns and the creation of credit is born out of this process. Let's get down, look at for the example, you put in $100, the first loan is $90. Now, the second deposit is $90, um, 90 percent of 90 dollars it's eight one dollars right and then the cycle continues the supply continues so through this process the total amount of money circulating in the economy expands the initial deposit plus the subsequent loans and deposits contribute to an increased um, supply of money beyond the original deposit amount. So this is a pure magic that goes on in the financial industry. So in conclusion, there you have it folks, the hidden truth about how banks make million with your money. It is crucial to be aware of this mechanism to make informed financial decisions. So the banks are business people. They would trade with the money that you give them. They would take calculated risk. They would make sure that the money that you give them keeps circulating, keeps going and making more money for them. So if the banks are willing to take risk with your money, why are you a risk adverse person? Why do you leave your money in just savings accounts? Like I've been talking about in my other videos, Leaving your money in savings account should not be your only um, long-term strategy. You should learn to diversify. Put a little bit of your money 
in cash value life insurance put a little bit of your money majority of money i would suggest into real estate um leave some of your money in um stock market i use mutual funds um for my 401k and uh, my traditional ira and um diversify your money as much as possible but in my own diversification i try to specialize in one thing right i try to learn one thing as much as possible and that is real estate so i'm gonna be making more videos on real estate apartment investing and um, how i am profiting from that and hopefully you are going to um, join me in, in profiting from all these investment vehicles so thank you like always for um, watching this video and um, remember to hit the subscribe button remember to comment on this video like this video um, and so that would encourage me to make more wonderful videos so we can reach more people let's reach more people guys help me reach more people um, with this financial independence message that um, I'm running with. So thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.